In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to use the camera motion tracking feature in Blender. And camera tracking is only a relatively new feature available since Blender 2.61. So if you've got uh, a version before that, you might need to upgrade uh, before doing this tutorial. So we're going to be creating a composite by adding 3D to a video clip. The footage we're using was recorded in the Giant Causeway in Northern Ireland, um, but obviously you can use any footage you like. So first check the settings of your video footage, the pixel dimensions uh, and the details, and you can do that by right clicking and going to get info. In Blender go to the dimension settings in the render tab. Make sure the resolution is 100% and the frames per second matches that of your video clip and the dimensions as well. Open the video sequence editor. Um, this is a video editor similar to Premiere or iMovie and you can use it to edit video. Click add movie and import your video clip. You should see two tracks, one for the audio and one for the video. Delete the green audio track by selecting it and pressing X to delete. Move the video clip back to frame 1 and click the icon to the right of the checkerboard to preview the video. Change the end frame to 100. Now go to the render settings again and change the output to 720p. So we're working with full HD at the moment, which is 1080p. So we want to export at 720p. So change the dimensions to 1280 pixels by 720 pixels, which is the equivalent of YouTube HD definition. Change the render output folder and choose JPEGs as output. So we're going to export our video as a sequence of JPEG images, which Blender handles much more efficiently. Click Create New Directory to make a new folder, and click Render Animation, and a folder of JPEGs will be saved. You can close this file now and open up a new Blender file. Change the dimensions to 1280 by 720, and Increase the quality to 100%. Open the movie clip editor window and click open and select the first JPEG. So this is the movie clip editor as opposed to the video sequence editor. Change the end frame to 100 and we're going to open file user preferences and go down to where it says memory cache limit. At the moment it's probably set to quite a low value. We're going to increase this to 1024 megabytes. This increases the amount of RAM available to play your video back in Blender. Otherwise it could uh, lag and play back quite slowly. So split the window and create a 3D view window on the right. We're going to make Blender's camera match the camera that shot the video. So to track the camera motion, we have to select a number of points that stand out from the video clip. Make sure your side panels are open by pressing T and N. Make sure you're on frame 1. And you can click Add Marker on the left or and move your marker around. Or you can just press Control and left click to create a marker box anywhere on the video. Pick markers that stand out and especially ones that have contrasting edges. So there's no point choosing uh, a marker or positioning a marker on a part of the video that all looks the same because uh, Blender won't be able to track it. Under the track heading on the left panel, click play. You want to choose things like stones or uh, highly contrasted objects that stand out from the rest of the background. Blender can get confused sometimes and may need manual tracking as well. 
Press the next frame button, then press G to put the marker in the right place. Save the file, pick another point, and repeat the last few steps. You can disable markers with the right tab key by unchecking Enabled in the right panel in any frame. And you can turn the marker on and off again. So you should make between 10 and 15 markers in your video, uh, which is 100 frames long, for a decent to good camera track. Start off with 10 to 15 markers tracking in your movie. On the right panel, open Tracking Settings. So there's two types of tracking technology in Blender, SAD and KLT, or as we've been doing, you can use a hybrid of both. You can also change the box size of your marker and search area from here. If the tracker jumps to the wrong object on the left tab, click Clear After or Clear Before uh, to remove the frames after or before your current position on the timeline. When you've got enough tracks done, save your file. You need to tell Blender what kind of camera you used to record the footage. So to do that, we need to open Camera Data on the right panel and choose your camera from the drop-down menu. So in my case, uh, I recorded this video clip using a Canon 60D, so I'm going to choose that from the preset list. Uh, if you didn't record the footage yourself, you can just choose what you think it might have been recorded with. At the bottom of the movie clip editor window, change tracking to reconstruction. On the left panel, click set as background under clip. Open a new 3D view window and switch to camera view and you should see a composite. In the tracker window, press A to select all the tracks. Go back into tracking mode and go to the solve section. Press camera motion to solve the camera motion. Blender gives us an average solve error percentage. Any solve error between 0 and 3 is very good. If it's larger than 3, uh, it means that the markers are not good and the error rate will be higher and the track will be quite poor. You may need to redo your markers again. So go down to Clean Up and press Clean Tracks. Go back to Solve and click Clear Solution. Under Refine, the drop down menu, choose the focal length K1, K2, press Clear Solution and then camera motion one more time and the average solve error rate should be lower this time. You want to get that as low as possible. The lower it is, the more accurate the track will be. Go to reconstruction mode and choose clip setup tracking scene. In 3D view, Blender creates a number of empty cross points to match the tracking markers in 3D space and now the camera has been mapped onto the tracking movement accurately. Press N to open the side panel and increase the opacity of the background image to 100%. Go back to the reconstruction window and select three markers on the ground. Under orientation, click set floor and this maps the floor or repositions the floor so that Blender knows where the floor is supposed to be. Select a marker roughly in the center of the scene and click Set Origin. Select two markers on the x-axis, side to side, and click Set X-axis. Select two markers on the y-axis, up and down, and click Set Y-axis. These are both optional, you don't have to do that. And finally, Select two markers and roughly judge the distance between them in meters and change the distance to the number of meters between them and then click Set Scale. Now we've set up our camera track. We can add several 3D objects to the scene 
and they will appear as if they're part of the video clip. In my example, I'm going to add a panda standing on one of the rocks. Um, if you want to show only shadows, for example, on the floor, create a material and under shadows, select only shadows and then only shadow from the drop down menu. So, for example, for my panda, I'm going to add a cube underneath him and add this material with only shadow uh, selected so that the cube doesn't appear but the shadows that it casts do. So this has been a very simple introduction to using the camera tracking feature in Blender.